So today we'll just uh, briefly review the epidemiology and pathophysiology of intracranial atherosclerotic disease specifically, and then we'll discuss the role of TCD studies in evaluating intracranial disease. Uh, we can talk about other modalities that we use TCD for, but we'll focus specifically on intracranial disease today. So in, intracranial and extracranial uh, atherosclerosis accounts for 10 to 20 percent of all strokes or TIAs. Uh, we know that extracranial disease is seen in our Caucasian patients, and there's a high incidence of intracranial disease with our Asian, Hispanic, and African American patients. If you look at some of the studies coming out of Asia, um, up to 50 percent of patients with stroke can have intracranial disease as the mechanism for stroke, so very high um, outside of uh, uh, the Western Hemisphere. Um, and the common sites are, are listed there in the order of frequency seen intracranially. Um, and why this is very important is because when you get that patient that has intracranial disease, what you have to recognize is this is a, a high risk of recurrence type of disease. So in 90 days, up to 60% of these patients will have another event, a stroke or a TIA. Um, and one in four of your patients will have another event at two years. Um, so this is something that, you know, even though you don't see it very often, this should be a, a red flag for you when you see a patient that has this type of disease. So mechanisms of stroke. There are a few types of mechanisms that we um, consider when we look at intracranial disease. What we see here is occlusion or an in situ thrombotic event or a local small arterial branch occlusion by plaque. So this can actually look like a small vessel stroke or a small subcortical stroke. Um, uh, what we would call a lacunar infarct. And then sometimes we get multiple branches, and then we see something called a lagoon or a macoon. <laughs> One of my residents really likes that term. <laughs> um, and um, the second mechanism that we have to consider is plaque fragility. fragility. So when that ruptures, it can go uh, and distalize and cause strokes further downstream. And this looks like a cortical embolic stroke, uh, respecting that territory. The third mechanism that we see stroke in intracranial disease is hemodynamically significant sten stenosis in the setting of hypoperfusion to that hemisphere. And what you'll see in this case are watershed distribution strokes. The use of transcranial Doppler in stroke is broad. Um, for those of you ha who have all the modalities available, uh, you can use it to evaluate your patient's collateral circulation, direction of flow, um, uh, external uh, to internal collateralization, um, anterior to posterior, things like that. We can also look at cryptogenic stroke like Dr. Nasser mentioned. Um, we use embolic detection um, to look for if you can have uh, multiple embolic uh, signals on one side unilaterally, that may suggest that it's an atherosclerotic mechanism in the carotid or intracranially uh, versus if you see